quote, this government does not tolerate corruption. Any allegations are investigated. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes. Supplementary question, Rodney Hyde. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Prime Minister. Will she therefore assure the House that the Serious Fraud Office will be able to assess and investigate unimpeded the claims of corruption by a businessman repeated on several occasions to Dominion Post reporter Phil Kitchen that this businessman was one of several people that P Peter Simonovich gave $9,999 and 95 cents to in 2002 to pass on to New Zealand first in exchange for Winston Peters, quote, shutting up about his allegations of wrongdoing against Simonovich Fisheries, and that, quote, sure enough, within a couple of weeks, Winston Peters did shut up with the man's statement and his details provided last week to the Serious Ford Office with the businessman himself concern for his personal safety. The Right Honourable Prime, a point of order, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Madam Speaker, you've just heard a very serious allegation from a member who typically fails to name any person other than one company. But the critical person is the one he claims is a businessman whose life's under threat, apparently. Uh, unless it's from Rodney, I can't imagine who. But I want to know, is that a fair question in this House? Yes, well, unfortunately, yes, from time to time, allegations are made, and that falls into that category, which is permitted under the standing orders. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Madam we Speaker. Yeah, you... Madam Speaker, right the relevant Prime question Minister. to me was, can such allegations be fully and independently investigated? And the answer is, of course, yes. Supplementary question, Rodney Hyde. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a point of order, the Right Honourable Winston. No, I want to ask something a question. Two. Uh, well, I'm. S <laughs> would, oh, would you both well, when you get called, it will be your turn. Otherwise, you'll both leave the chamber and no one will be asking a question which will solve the problem. Be seated. I called Rodney Hyde before I saw the Right Honourable Winston Peters, so I will call Rodney Hyde and then we will take Right Honourable Winston Peters' question. Thank you. To the Prime Minister, does she think it a good look for her government to be abolishing the Serious Ford Office just as it's assessing the complaint by a former business associate of Peter Sumanovich that her Minister of Foreign Affairs, Winston Peters, went to see Peter Sumanovich to show him the evidence of corruption he had against Peter Sumanovich and stated that through a payment of $50,000, quote, we would just slowly get rid of it, end quote, or is she just going to keep accepting her Minister of Foreign Affairs word that he's done nothing wrong, even though she knows... Point of order, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Madam Speaker, we are not going to truly have some sort of half-baked serious fraud office inquiry inside this House conducted by Rodney Hyde QC. The reality of it is he hasn't presented one fact to make these serious allegations. They are deadly serious in my view, and they also concern the issue on which we turned over RNZ and TVNZ in December last year with one Phil Kitchen working for them. Yes, no, Those I, are the facts. No, thank you, Member. The only breach of standing orders is that questions are meant to be succinct as are answers. Rodney Hyde, if you could please make your questions succinct, that would be much appreciated, being consistent with the standing orders. Well, it's very hard. He's been up to such no, a lot of No, would you please just ask the question? <laughs> Thank you. To the Prime Minister, does she think it a good look to be abolishing the Serious Ford Office, just as it's assessing the complaint by a former business associate of Peter Simonovich, that her Minister of Foreign Affairs, Winston Peters, went to see Peter Simonovich to show him the evidence of corruption he had against Peter Simonovich and stated that through a payment of $50,000, quote, we would just slowly... Port of order, the Right Honourable Winston Madam Speaker, Peter. I demand that either gives me the evidence now or he apologises. What he's saying 
What he's saying is baseless and, more importantly, the subject of a serious defamation case for which, at the time, all the way till December last year, TVNZ and RNZ argued they had never at any point sought to impugn my integrity. He's now seeking to litigate a sub no, matter on the please House. Please be seated. Yes, it's not a point of order. Would the, would the member just complete his question, please? Point of order. The right honourable Madam Speaker, Speaker, the sub judice rule applies in this House. You know I have an action against TVNZ and RNZ and others. Oh, I'm sorry. Would the member please be seated? No, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I, I hadn't realised that. If the matter is, if matters that are before the court, there is many precedents that they are not to be raised in this House. So would the member please just succinctly ask his question, the point of his question, consistent with the, pub, with the standing orders? Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> I'll pick up where I was interrupted. That through a payment of $50,000, quote, we would just slowly get rid of it. Or is she just going to keep accepting her Minister of Foreign Affairs word? It's blow hard. Point of order, Madam right Speaker, honourable Winston Peters. He may not know any Latin, but the sub judice rule does not allow him to raise it in this House. I am fighting this case in the court and doing rather well at the moment. And with the greatest respect, they are not going to win TVNZ, RNZ and ACT inside this House. They have to come to court with me, and I'm very happy to join them. Uh, speaking no, um, the Honourable Bill English. Madam Speaker, there's a fairly important issue here. Uh, the member is clearly trying to stop a question being asked. I'll have to say that the way in which he's doing it is one I've never quite seen before. It certainly would be difficult if the House was, had to accept that, uh, on the word of Mr Peters, that this was sub judice, particularly when um, more than other members, he's often involved in court cases. I mean, it could end up in a ridiculous situation where uh, any, we couldn't ask, no questions could be asked uh, because a member said that they were involved in a court case just on their, just on their say so. And some members may well be in the position where they're always involved in some kind of legal matters related to their own activities. So I think we need to be pretty careful to make sure that a member can't be prevented from asking a question. It's one of the basic freedoms of this House. Uh, the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen. Now, unfortunately, Madam Speaker, there is a limitation upon mm. our freedom of speech in this House in that matter in relation to things which are sub judice. The issue here, presumably, is whether or not the matter being raised by Mr Hyde is central to the matter which is in front of the court in terms of the defamation case. Now, you're, you're hearing, I think, from Mr Peters that he, what he is telling you is that the matter being raised is central to that defamation case. If so, uh, then clearly uh, it's up to you to say. Um, and one can't go around the back door um, by uh, pretending that that matter has come from somewhere else and therefore is unrelated to the case before the court. Uh, and I think Mr Hyde really can re tell the House uh, whether, in his understanding, uh, what Mr. Mr Peters is arguing is true. Because if what Mr Peters is arguing is true, then the House should not be pursuing this matter at this point. Mm. Uh, the, speaking to the pink point of order, is it? Madam Speaker, the right Honourable Winston there are Peters. numerous speakers' rulings with respect to the sub judice rule in this House that one may refer to an event of a case but not the substance of it. Those are the previous rulings of this House. Mr Hyde well knows that. So do his backers. That's why, having lost in court, they seek to pursue it inside this House and they should be stopped from doing so. Yes, I think, no, no, I think I've, I've heard enough. The, I think the difficulty has arisen is that Mr Hyde could have asked the substance of his question without the elaboration that went on that would have in fact breached if there is a matter, and I take the member's word for it, because I have to, as we all do, that this matter is before the courts. So, I'm in the difficult position because the question went on for so long, if I'd understood the substance of it, it was to deal with a matter about independence of inquiries. Can the member, without reference to any of the specifics, ask the essence of the question? Rodney Hyde. Point of order. Point Madam of order, Speaker. Rodney Hyde. There is nothing before the courts relating to this matter. Mr Peters himself said that he thinks he's won something in a court, which again is news to everyone here. The matter that I'm referring to is not before the courts, 
And I think it's a sad day if you're going to shut down a question from a member of this House over a most important matter. I don't see why I shouldn't be just allowed to finish my question. No, I'm sorry. I refer the member to the standing order 111, and I will certainly take it away and look at it. I am, have accepted the member's word. There is a matter revolving around these issues that are raised, but it's before the court. I have to do that. Now, if the member wishes to ask another question, please do so. Rodney you, Hyde. Madam Speaker, just point of order. Point of order. Rodney Hyde. Will you be telling the House tomorrow what matter is before the court? that prevents me from asking No, I'm sorry. The member knows that's improper. That is not the case. I have said I'd look at it. I take the member's word. We all know that we take member's word. If there's a matter before the court, I take the member's word for it, as we do in other matters in this House. Now, either the member asks a question or we move on. Well, point of order, Madam Speaker. This is the last point of order on this matter. Well, it's a difficult Rodney matter Hyde. for me, Madam Speaker. I've waited patiently to ask my question today, as I'm entitled to as a Member of Parliament. What we've heard from Mr Peters is that there's some matter before the court. He's provided no elucidation as to what that matter is. You've told me you don't know what the case is, and you've told me that I can ask a question as long as it doesn't relate it to some matter before the court of which no one in this House is aware of. What I'd like you to do is to ask Mr Peters to please explain what the matter is before the court that he's talking about. So As members well know, it is the convention this House who take members' word. And there are consequences if, in fact, that word is proven otherwise not to be the case. That is the way in which it works. So another question, Rodney Hyde. A point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Um, just on the, on the ruling you've just made around Standing Order 111, um, it's dependent on the Speaker taking the view that it appears to the Speaker that there is a real and substantial danger of prejudice to the trial of the case. Could you please tell us what is that? No, it's not danger? the question, please, and I suggest a little bit more experience, if I can say, before we end this. Uh, Rodney Hyde, supplementary question. Pauling. Supplementary to the Prime Minister, Madam Speaker. Rodney Hyde. Thank you. To the Prime Minister, does it concern her that a second business associate, unrelated to any court case, <laughs> a second business associate of Peter Simonovich has repeatedly said that he too wrote cheques for Peter Simonovich to New Zealand First and kept the bank records just in case something went wrong. And what will it take for her finally to take my advice and to stand Winston Peters down so that his shonky dealings, secret trusts and point his of order, Point of order, right honourable Winston Speaker, Peters. He must surely be looking in the mirror when he made those last comments. This is a man with a 2.8 million trust. But here's the point. This is a matter before the court. I took it seriously. I sued five different parties, and I still am. And my lawyer advised me before he left for overseas the exact updated state of the case. Now, Madam Speaker, just to put the record straight, in December last year, it was found by the courts that there was a prima facie case for these parties to answer. That's where things stand at this point in time. He cannot get away in this House with that sort of if, uh, illusion, illusion when the facts are before the court and they are sub judice. Now, I've made the ruling. Rodney Hyde, you can ask your question without referring to those matters. The substance of your question can be asked. Thank you. But not, not with those matters that are before the court. There are no matters before the court in my I'm question. Sorry. I'm sorry. We... Please be seated. Good grief. No. I'll go through it one more time, and that's it. And if my ruling is challenged again, I'll be asking the member to leave the House. We've taken the member's word for it. I've said that the, the member, Rodney Hyde, can ask his question, the substance of his question, without specific reference to those particular matters for which then the Prime Minister can reply. So I ask the member to do that, otherwise I'll have to move on 
to the next question. Ron, Thank you. Uh, Jerry Brownlee, point Madam, of order. Madam Speaker, if this whole issue hangs on uh, your taking the word of a member, then which member are you taking the word of? Because Mr Hyde has made it very clear that his question does not relate to a court case. Now, we on this side of the House have some understanding of where things are at with this particular matter and would concur with Mr Hyde. Well, that's all very well, but the member that's affected, who's got the matter before the court, it's his word I've taken. You're right, because he is obviously the subject of the case. Rodney Hyde. And of course, he's an honourable member. Rodney Hyde, do you have a question to ask? Thank you. To the Prime Minister. Cheer up, Michael. Does it concern her? Point of order, the Honourable Bill English. Uh, Madam Speaker, we're reluctant to intervene in this dispute, but the uh, Deputy Prime Minister said across the House, how much are they paying you? Now, that's not a, a, that is out of order directed at any Member of Parliament, but particularly with respect to asking a question. Point of order, order, Madam Speaker. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Dr. Michael Collins. Raise the allegation, Mr. Hyde's presence, that he received and has received in the past outside payment uh, before, of course, the current rules came into force, and at no point in the past has he ever denied that. Uh, Rodney, Hoy Rodney Hyde. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Am I going to be uh, uh, allowed to ask my question now? Not the way you asked it before, but you can ask the substance of it. Well, let me try, because I don't know what substance you're objecting to. No, I, oh, I'm sorry. If the member is starting to trifle, actually, with the, with the Speaker, so if the member finds himself in that position, I suggest he doesn't ask his question. No, I'm definitely going to ask my question. Okay, Rodney Hyde. Does it concern the Prime Minister that a former business associate of Peter Simonovich is on record, a record that I've provided to the Serious Fraud Office, making a complaint of corruption against her Minister of Foreign Affairs, point of order stating the, that Peter, the, uh, Peter uh, Simonovich... Point of order, please be seated. Point of order has been taken. Right, Honourable Winston, Madam Speaker, all members have rights of speech in this House, and we're hearing them exercised today. Madam right, Speaker, Honourable Winston, I think Peter. you may have given six rulings to this member already. He is choosing to ignore it because his purpose is to get some sort of story out, false as it is, for the newspapers up the stairs to publish, regardless of the veracity or the truth of the matter. It is the subject of a court case, in fact, where five defendants have been involved and still remains the case. I'm asking you to either ask him to change for the last time or send him from the House. No, I've asked the member, and this will be the last time. Rodney Hyde. I'm going to ask my question, Madam Speaker. If you don't allow me to ask it, then you'd better get me to leave now, because I am entitled in this House to ask this question. You're Does it concern you? No, I'm her? sorry. I'm sorry. Please be seated. I've told the member all members are entitled to ask questions that are consistent with the standing orders. That's all I'm asking the member to do. I have ruled his question, the way it was phrased, was not consistent with the standing orders, but he can still ask the substance of the question. And that's all I'm asking him to do, is comply with the standing orders. Thank you. Rodney Hyde. Let me ask precisely the substance of my question, Madam Speaker, to the Prime Minister. Does it concern her that a former business associate of Peter Simonovich is on record making a complaint of corruption against her Minister of Foreign Affairs, the stating point of that order, the, the give him nine Right Honourable Winston Peters. Madam Speaker, you have given him now six or seven rulings. He has simply got up the last time to read out the question from the previous time you gave him a ruling. Mm. I think he's trifling with the chair now and that he should be asked to leave the House. Yes, I'm also being persuaded of that point. So I'm sorry, Mr Hyde, I've made my ruling. I'm not, no, it's not a shame, and that member will be asked to leave if he says that one more time. I am here to try and ensure that the standing orders are complied with and that the rules that we abide by in terms of taking members' word are also abide by. Mr Hyde is perfectly entitled to ask the substance of his question. 
and I've done this on many other occasions where I've said that to members and they have in fact implied. Now if the member does not wish to do that, I suggest he does not ask his question. Well then, I'm sorry to do this. I really am sorry. But I'll ask the member then please to leave the House. I've asked the member to leave the House. I've not denied you the right to ask your question. I've merely said you asked that question consistent with the standing orders. Would the member please leave the House? Thank you. Please leave. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Well, well, I'm sorry. The member wants to think very carefully before he does that. I understand that he is not being denied the right to ask his question. It's merely to ask that question consistent with the standing orders. That's all that's asked, and the substance of it can be asked. That other members have to comply with those rules. Mr Hyde, I ask you to comply with them. Point of order. No, I've asked the member please to leave. Please to leave. Thank you. Jerry Brownlee. Madam Speaker, you've taken a, an extremely strong step today in denying Mr Hyde the right to ask his question, and you've relied heavily on the conventions of the House. Madam Speaker, can I ask you to refer to Standing Order 111? And can I further ask, Madam Speaker, how in this case you have applied C of that particular uh, uh, standing order, which requires that, the, it, that it, if it appears to the Speaker that there is a real and substantial danger of prejudice to the trial of the particular case? Real and substantial. Madam Speaker, uh, the particulars of this case are not unknown to members on this side of the House. And, Madam Speaker, it would be our position uh, that there has been a travesty of justice here, that Mr Ride, Hyde has been done a wrong, and that the question should have been asked. And the Hansard record will show that he asked very simple, uh, used very simple words heading in a particular direction that had nothing to do with the court case Mr Peters is relying on. Uh, speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen. Madam Speaker, there are two issues here which may be related but actually need to be carefully separated. The first and much more important issue now is respect for your authority as Speaker. Uh, your authority was deliberately flouted. You gave rulings on a number of occasions. Mr Hyde refused to accept those rulings and continued to behave contrary to your rulings. You allowed him very, very significant leeway in that regard because those, that matter occurred on a number of occasions. Any member of this House who behaved in that way that frequently would sooner or later be subject to the sanction that you have applied and indeed, given his subsequent behaviour, you would have been justified in the next stage of the sanctions being applied, that is naming the member. Every member in this House needs to remind themselves that they are here to obey the authority of the Speaker when issues of that sort arise. The second matter, of course, is the matter of the judgment that you made about the sub judice rule. The member most closely involved, involved in the case assured you that these matters were before the court. In all the time I've been in Parliament, Standing Order 111 has been interpreted very broadly to protect the courts against Parliament discussing the matters before them uh, unless there are actually very strong circumstances which might justify that occurring. You clearly have determined that that was not the case. It's not for the House now to question your judgment. If Mr Hyde has other evidence, he may bring that evidence to you uh, before tomorrow in the House so that you may consider that evidence. But that is the way this place has to work. In essence, it is like a game of rugby. Sometimes a call may be made that one may dispute that call, but the dispute should not occur with the referee. The referee's judgment is final and we continue on from that point, or this House cannot function uh, unless we obey that rule. Uh, right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Speaker, I think you should know that when the um, National Party member, Jerry Brownie, says what he says, he knows full well that one of his colleagues knows otherwise. He's got lawyers in his party who could tell him otherwise. But more importantly, this is a case 
where Mr Carter, his colleague, had his lawyer get up in court and say at no time did he ever, associated with these allegations, ever mean to impugn Winston Peters, his integrity or his honesty. Yes. That's what he argued. Please. No, please, please, please be seated. We're Based. Yes. I also don't need assistance, Mr Finlayson, on running this House. I thank you for your asides, but I would say in future they are not necessary. Now, members, I had said I would look at this matter, and I will look at the matter, and under those circumstances we normally move on. Mr Hyde would have ample opportunity tomorrow and the next day to be able to come back in the light of that. He chose not to take that course of action. I now ask the House if we can please move on to the next question, question number six, the Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, supplementary? Sorry. Uh, the Right Honourable Winston Madam Speaker, I'd like a few supplementaries myself. Well, that may well be the case, but you don't do it through a point of order. Jerry Brownlee yeah, asked no, the supplementary. Okay. No, I'm sorry, Jerry Brownlee. Uh, to the Prime Minister, does she still uh, accept all of the assurances unless uh, something arises out of the Privileges Committee or some other appropriate authority which suggests I shouldn't do so? But I don't have such information. Supplementary question. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. I asked the, uh, ask the Prime Minister if there was a subsequent series of cheques paid some substantial time later, despite the fact that there was an inquiry in this House on a matter that concerned a business, and here's the relevant point, those cheques were never cashed, therefore at no point could New Zealand First be seen... What, what is the yeah, point of order, what? Jerry Brownlee? Yeah, Speaker, please be seated. There's a point of order. Madam Speaker, I think you've uh, yes. uh, well indicated to the House that this matter is sub judice, therefore right. questions cannot be asked. No, I agree with you. I agree with you entirely. If the member has a question that is consistent with the standing orders, he may ask it. If not, I suggest he doesn't. Right Honourable Winston Thank you, Madam Speaker. Has the Prime Minister seen any reports in the weekend papers written by former ACT MPs confirming an undeclared gift of 20000 per annum of free office space over several years and further adding that the bill to refurbish the gifted office space after ACT vacated it was sent to parliamentary service for the taxpayer to pick up? Point of order, Jerry Brown. Uh, Madam Speaker, a um, supplementary surely has to, uh, in fact, um, relate to the question that's asked. Now, Mr Peters appears to be not only changing the tack of his question, but now drifting right off the point. Uh, the Honourable, sorry, Right Honourable Winston Madam Peters. Speaker, the member in his primary question referred to corruption. Mm. I'm giving you an example of it. Yeah, I, I would agree with the member. The, the, the question was quite broad in terms of those allegations. So the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Madam Speaker, not only did I see the matter the member referred to reported, but I also saw the extraordinary report in the same article that a property developer had paid around $20,000 for a photograph of Richard Preble. <laughs> Madam Speaker, that must be pretty close to constituting fraud. Uh, sup order. Supplementary question. Order. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Would an, ex would, an example, would an example of the kind of thing Mr Hyde alleges be the Asian chapter of the ACT Party paying the legal cost to get rid of Donna Awateri so that the ACT Asian candidate could replace him to the tune of substantial money? And why was that not, under their rules, declared? Uh, right Honourable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, indeed the allegation was made in a Sunday newspaper by the former ACT Member of Parliament that an Asian chapter of ACT was indeed, uh, the word was used, pressured to pay the legal bills of ACT with respect to Donna Huata Awateri because their candidate from the Asian chapter, Kenneth Wang, was next on the list and would benefit from 
uh, Donna Awateri, who after his departure from the House. Uh, any further supplementaries? Then question number six, the Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, this question is to the Minister of Health. Uh, what consideration, of any, is the government giving to reducing the number of district health boards and